All right, so today we're here with the uh, uh, phenom, uh, the Empty Force Master, <laughs> Alexander Krakulinik. Um, You know, uh, there's a lot of amazing energy practitioners out there, but uh, Alex is particularly my favorite because he's he can do so many amazing things. And uh, um, how I got to know Alex was when I uh, um, first enrolled in the Avatar Energy Master Institute. Alex was, uh, you know, was one of the I don't even want to call him a student because he wasn't really a student, but he was one of the, you know, top practitioners in the community. And like everybody was talking about how amazing he was and stuff like that. And uh, um, my good friend, Max Reeder, when he um, he actually invited Alex to come over to New York and uh, do a seminar with him. And um, he taught him the art of empty force and stuff like that. And yeah, he was uh, Max was just telling me how amazing of an experience that was and how amazing what person Alex was and stuff like that. And he had a really, really phenomenal experience. And uh, ever since he told me a lot about him, I got really intrigued and uh, I got even more interested in Alex. And I started looking into uh, his content more, his channels. And I was like, wow, just <laughs> so many amazing things he does. I was just blown away. So, uh, so Alex, so, um, you know, could you uh, briefly, uh, you know, explain how you guys started in your spiritual journey and metaphysics and all this kind of stuff? <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for the invitation. And oh, my journey. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just reflected over the last days, actually, what brought me actually to become the person who I am. Hey, Amin, nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you, Alex. Thank you for coming today. And so I just looked because people mostly ask you about, like, how was your journey? What have you trained? How did you accomplish this or that? And how can you do this or that? And then I just thought, okay, what was my my whole life about? And then I yeah, I looked up so many different things, like even from the childhood, like how was my energy? And then I looked at the Maya calendar and this year I came in with wind wind. So I always was like hyperactive and full of energy. Now the whole period just is changing in these years. For me, it's just totally crazy who I am now. <laughs> it's totally weird. Um, so I thought, ah, okay, one part what many people forget, I would say, is sport. Sport brought me to a lot of stuff. And... There are two types of human beings, like the people like, like macrocosmic and microcosmic. I'm a macrocosm. So I do everything and then I find my essence. Let's say I do 70% of one thing and then I know it. And then I know, oh, this is it. And there are other people who just do one thing and are perfect in one thing and then they find their essence. And for me, it's always like, oh, I was collecting. And that was the reason why I did like 200 sports or like more than 20 jobs, because I was always inspired by everything to see oh, what else is possible with this body, what else is possible with this mind. And for me, let's say the normal people just see you as a sport guy. Oh, he's talented. Or what is talent? It's nonsense. Mm -hmm. Actually, everything is just hard training. <laughs> <laughs> and talent for me is something like when you born and with four years you start playing like Mozart. That's right. the talent. Everything else, what you see from other people, it's just like being um, strict and disciplined in one thing what you really want to do. Yeah. And so I was laughing so much because people mostly use words and don't even know what the meaning of the words, but it's a global problem. Even for me, sometimes to explain things in English is totally different. So. I try to find the essence what I know <laughs> to give it in another language. And so I said, okay, I grew up with my grandparents um, also going a lot of fishing and hunting. And I know, okay, I was very hyperactive, but with sitting for a day, just fishing gave me the patience. Then my father brought me to Taekwondo. So this brought me again to, to fight and to be like training like six times a week because I was crazy. But 
Hello. <laughs> Hello, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, well, that's pretty cool. and so that I was just thinking, okay, then I came one thing was training the mind through sport. And for me was when I went, when I was 19, I started more with decathlon and triathlon. Oh, wow. And I had just this focus in one thing. So I switched off my mind. And the most thing why I won this competition is because I totally switched off everything. You don't feel pain. You just know, oh, I don't want to shit in my pants. I just want to get the, uh, and finish the triathlon or finish the marathon or whatever I did in that day. And But I also saw the the downside, like, okay, why I'm training like an idiot? Like, <laughs> yeah, how more I start to study, like in sports science, how more you say, how more you train your intellect, then you start to question why I'm doing it. Why I run 40 rounds just to be one minute faster than one person. So for what? It's totally senseless what we are doing here on earth. But yeah, so to be a good sport guy, you don't need to be intelligent. And most people aren't. But That's true. <laughs> how more you start to think about everything, how less you want to do because you understand the intent. What was the intent? And mostly what I figured out, everything is a placeholder of love. And then everything, like eight years ago, I said, I stopped training. For what? Why should I train three hours break dance to make a new movement? No, it's not dance. It's just like, again, a concept in the mind. And for me, what I see, it doesn't matter if you stop ejaculating your ching or whatever people believe what is right or wrong. The most important thing is your mind, but people can't see it. That's why they judge you from the body. They touch you from the face. They touch you all the time the outside, but they don't understand that you're a fucking genius. And only people can see, like, let's say normal people will never see who you really are. How more you're sensitive on energy, you can see in someone's eyes, and, oh, wow, interesting mind. Or you see the energy field, oh, very nice. And I think that's very hard. That's why we have all these names, like people say, oh, you're a master. So, too far away from being a master depends on your definition of a master but people need all these labels to see oh he got into a higher level of understanding mm -hmm. and hmm, there the problem is people never can reach this whole picture of understanding because we constantly have like a filter in seeing who a person is or what is the level it's like and I saw it with my students when I started to open my heart and say, oh, I have a problem here. Or can you help me with this? That sometimes people think, oh, how can he have this problem or whatever? Because people don't see that we're constantly going to different shifts. So I had maybe the last three years where I've been just in different mind states, mind enlightenment states where there's nothing to do than just to be and then you have no goal and you don't even want to do anything. And now this just comes back, oh, Alexander becomes a human now. Oh, what's going on? Why do I have feelings now? It was so weird for me this year that I have feelings, oh, what do I want to do now for my life? Mm -hmm. What's going yeah. on? Oh, yeah, it's changed. Everything changed. And that's all the surface so, we all have. Like, just imagine, like, how who have you been, like, seven years ago? And why I say seven years? Because all the seven years we can feel the different changes in us. Mm -hmm. And... Life is just amazing to say like that. <laughs> right, right. That's cool. so, so, Alex, is this the first time you met Almond like this? I mean, I've been on your webinar yeah. uh, once yes. or twice. Yeah. Um, we, we were talking on Facebook, but never on video. I think. Yeah, this first was, time. Oh, that's really cool. The two legends meet. That's really <laughs> cool to witness. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so how did you guys uh, come to know each other? Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I first saw him on YouTube, but uh, if I remember correctly, he sent me uh, sorry, he sent me nice videos on Facebook. So it just was like, oh, I just was looking at this guy's video and now I got a message from him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Amin, I'm sorry. Yeah. Can you shut your door? <laughs> um, I think it's sure. that going into my audio as well. So. <laughs> Cool, cool. Okay, so um, 
ask me uh, about yes. um, when so you Alex, started. So, oh, or, okay. so, sorry, what's that? Um, I, I want to answer your question because I was the macrocosmic just to explain oh, yeah. all the yeah. to really answer your question. My I think through the hard experience from Taekwondo, what I started with 14, I, I had this focus and I knew with 17, 18, the things happened that my mind was that strong that I had to be very careful with what I really want. So when I had like some emotion and I manifested not happy things when I was angry, <laughs> so I felt out, I felt like, oh shit, I have to be very aware what I really want and what I say. Because through the training, my mind becomes so powerful. Like even my, my, my first girlfriend, we were playing billiard. And I was just standing at the pool table and I just like was visualizing she can't get the ball in. She can't get it in. And she was like a skeptic. I don't believe you. But after five times, not getting the ball in the hole, what was in front, really like one centimeter away, said, stop doing it. I don't do anything. You don't even don't be, you don't believe it. So what is the problem? <laughs> and so when I was 18, I had a lot of health issues. So I had like two operations on my ear because I was diving too deep and ripped and a lot of nonsense. And so then I lost my balance. I couldn't train Taekwondo. Then that relationship ended. Then I had no idea what we'll do in my life. <laughs> and then. Um, then I started to study to finally to go studying sports science later on. And then with 22, it came again that I, I knew, I think in 1920, it was the first time that I had friends with me. And then I knew what they were thinking, like numbers or like, that was weird or, or color. Things was just coming up and said, oh, that's interesting. And... I, I knew a girl from from an internet page and we were flirting, I think, at the same age. And then finally, after four years, I met her in Vienna. And it felt like that we know each other for a long time. She grabbed my hand and we were already together. And it was a kind of weird thing. <laughs> and what happened later on was um, she, uh, she said that she moved um, from the apartment. I asked her, oh, does your apartment have something to do with the number three, four, five. And she looked at me, did I told you? I said, no, we didn't even talk for two years. Ah, yeah, I've worn in the Favoriten Street 345. I said, okay. And so this thing started to happen. Then it always went away. And then I started training again, I think with the next girlfriend uh, when I was 23, 24. Then it came again that we tried um, to train a little bit the intuition like with cards, but it was never, my full goal, I never was like interested or it was not in my orbit yet about spiritual powers because at that time it started much more about healing because I had so many health problems. Mm -hmm. I was very weak since I'm born. I had so many problems wow. and, yeah. and that's why I know, okay, everything is in the mind. So I had to change my mind. I was always very thin, I had no muscles, I, I was weak, I was always a victim, and then I was, no, this needs to change. And I think when I just look at this whole journey, I said, wow, it's fucking crazy what I did. <laughs> and so I, I started later all the internal martial arts and all the things. And I see I just came from a different section because first, like, Martial art, being a magician and healer was all one together, like an alchemist. And then it separated and doing to fight. The other one is just a healer, the other one is the alchemist. And so step by step, I started to integrate also the other parts. So for me, the most important thing was still healing. And then I came to quantum healing. I see this, 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 this. And through that, I started to open my field. And I think this is what is missing mainly in all the martial art because martial art why do you train martial art because you feel weak you want to feel strong or whatever it comes from past lives so they have mostly a lot of big um problems to open the heart because they're afraid they're afraid to be a victim that's why you have to train you get strong and look at the difference between a bodybuilder or a fat woman both are in pain with their childhood that's why they have to make like a 
a wall in front of you so nobody can touch me, I'm strong, or nobody will touch me, I'm fat, whatever. It's all the same mind problem. And then I just saw, oh, then it's like esoteric and spiritualism. And I just started to write a text about it because I see we have so much separation all the time. Because this esoteric people just want to be away from Earth and say, oh, where's my rainbow? Where's my, my unicorn, my, my angels? And they can't integrate to be fully here on this earth. And the other spiritual people just say, oh, everything is just me. I don't care when else you can integrate, integrate, whatever. And for me, I just thought I was very in the esoteric scene because I go in, I went into love, I went into healing. And then I found out, oh, people are not ready to receive healing and love because we're so in separation. And then I started, oh, I have to be much more grounded because other people can't even get anything from me. And yeah, this is what I like my whole journey. I saw, oh, I opened my channels of my sensitivity much faster instead of a concept of an Asian, oh, you have to train 20 years, um, Wu Chi, Chan Chan or whatever. Of course it's working, but there are also other fast ways to do different things. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the main problem when people are stuck in one concept, what is right and what is wrong. And that's for me like, okay, I don't have a certain point of view anymore. I know this is maybe my experience, but I'm always ready to learn also other things and to integrate and see, because when you're just in this, I have to give you another tool and a person who is just doing that. And that's the main problem. People just want to have, oh, what's the one thing what is working? So, <laughs> working, love mostly. But how do you get that? How do you go into the state? And I think all these powers, just comes by being what you really are. This is a state of love because then you are one. And then it's not about, oh, I need to manipulate to show who strong I am, that I am that. I am fire. And then you do a certain breathing technique and then you burn this or whatever. But for me later was, oh, why should I train now one year just for levitation or pyrokinesis or whatever? It can come easy. The problem is we are so used to train hard to do this and that, and we totally forget just to lift and join to be a child. Mm -hmm. And that's right. what I thought right. is the difference, like being an alchemist, being a yogi practitioner, or being um, a Buddhist. You can see the energy is different. The Buddhist is most like this calm, mostly and don't care about the body. A yogi also go too much fire, mostly with two or whatever, and then they burn out and get crazy. And I can, yeah, I've seen a lot of crazy people. And that's the problem. Like for me, I saw like when I met Demo Mitchell, he is teaching alchemy, and I said, "Wow!" I was just standing next to him, and I felt his energy. Like, what the heck is going on? And or like it was a Rinpoche master from the Buddhism sect, and I was standing in front of him, and he was blessing me, and I felt just like the whole workshop about empty. I was like. I'm not even here, I don't know. <laughs> so it depends what you want and what you want to accomplish. And people are, um, or like people, like even me, sometimes so distracted from everything what is. And then it's hard to find your thing. And I think the first time where I really felt supported for my life when I've been in New Zealand after a spiritual festival, and there was just one guy telling me, go there, do this healing, meet this one, meet this one, do that, meet some shamans. It's like, wow, life could be so easy. And so for every person, it's a little bit different. And when you know your own energy, you can look at, um, there are many systems like human body design, 64Ks, whatever. Then you know, oh, it only works for me when I got invited. Because first I was trying so much like from hip hop, I was organizing events and the constantly I was lacking energy and trying to build the culture. But when someone invited me to a seminar, yeah, boom, 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 everything was working. So, oh, that's actually my lifestyle. I'm an actor because I, I did everything because I had no one. That's why I had to cut my videos to organize, to do this, this, this. But then I said, hey, that's not why I'm here for. That's not my energy. I can do everything what I want. Of course, everyone can do it. It's just like, what do you really want? But um, what is really easy for you? And I think we forget this so many times. What is just easy? What do you love? And then we all come back to be this inner child. You just want to play and enjoy because the universe is so full of amazing things that you just can 
Yeah, just share right. enough with you. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Sorry for yeah. long yeah. intro. It was yeah. just like, <laughs> oh, no, no, it's fine, Alex. Um, so, Alex, um, <laughs> one of the questions, I mean, you know, I, I watched your interview on Julia's show and Nico's show and stuff like that. Um, some of the questions that I didn't get to ask, I wanted to ask you. For, first off, you have a really impressive physique. I mean, you have, you know, you're – you have like, you know, killer abs and you have a six, <laughs> a six pack, eight pack, whatever you really shred it. What, what do you, what exactly do you eat to, to maintain that? Kind yeah, of in silicone do you work out a lot or? <laughs> <I'm not again>. <laughs> <laughs> Repeat this. I was choking. Sorry. What was the question? Oh, the question? oh, so like what, what, what exactly do you eat to maintain such an impressive physique? Huh. <laughs> no, no eating, maybe. <laughs> um, Anything he probably eats burgers all day. <laughs> <laughs> so the funniest thing was um, when I went and study in Graz, the sports science, I was eating every day one kilo of pasta. Which because is I'm close to the Italian border. And the thing is, you need carbs when you train a lot. And I was training minimum six hours a day. Because I was in triathlon, I was in sports science, I was break dancing, I was training every day six hours. And so you wake up two hours in swimming three kilometers, then you have to run ten kilometers, then on the bike fifty kilometers, then you do other hobbies. So one, I one had kilos, two pounds. <laughs> it's yeah. two pounds of pasta for, for us uh, here in America. And I had a girlfriend at that time and she also like growed a little bit, but <laughs> 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 so I was like I was I had a soup, then a salad, then a half kilo gnocchi. I don't know if it's like uh, the potato stuff or like tortellini. And then I have amazing champignon cheese cream to it. And mm -hmm. after a half an hour, I was hungry again because I was burning so much. And I had a good metabolism. So for me, it was much harder to gain like weight instead of just losing it. So for me, if I don't train, I lose weight. When I was in India, I was most on the toilet. I lost like four kilos in the half year in India. And even when I did light eating and stopped eating, I lost in the first week four kilos, but then it stayed the same. I always was full of energy. So I wouldn't advise anyone my diet because then people say, oh, what do you eat? It's nonsense. You have a different body type. You have a different lifestyle. You have to look what is good for you. And with every different blood type, your body digests things differently. Like for my blood type, I will release it now. <laughs> I'm a negative the alien blood. And so for me, it's not good to eat meat. So it's for the only thing what I can eat with meat is like wild and, and salmon. And I really felt like, oh, when I eat the salmon, I had even like a better feeling when I was swimming, when I was training. It's like, oh, that's weird. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that you connect to this frequency. And people with oh have no problem with eating me and this is just like things what you have to know what is what is about my body what is about my lifestyle at the same time don't get crazy with diets because everything is mind how more you stress your mind how less you will achieve something mm -hmm. that's uh, the, the main thing in everything and for me sometimes how to, how it's it, it's so easy it's sometimes too easy to explain it <laughs> that's the problem because people want to have a strict Oh, I came from this one way. <laughs> to do, yeah. It's like, oh, I have to know you. I have to meet you. I have to see how is your mind working and then let go of the mind shit. And then we see how can you go there easily. That's why I even give tomorrow a meditation uh, seminar. And I don't, the first thing what I have to do is to that you let go all your point of view what meditation is for you. And then you can go beyond your concept of meditation, then you can reach a different level. And that's with, let's say, to the empty four of what you ask or the other powers. And one guy on YouTube asked, oh, which people, which master do we met? And I said, most I didn't met then many masters. For me, I, I saw the energy. I saw someone doing something. And then I connected to the field and asked myself, okay, how can I do it? And I went into this, oh, fuck, this is working. And the good thing was, I had a training partner and I tried everything out. I said, oh, is this working? Okay, this is not working. And so this is how it just started. And even the last years, I felt like, oh, I missed training because my training partner, Muslims have time, I'm traveling too much. And it was, oh, 
but where I'm going now? What do I really want to do? And then I also didn't have done that much healing because for me, healing was not important anymore. Because for me, I, I, I like it much more to teach you what's going on instead of just giving you energy wave. Then you feel transformed, maybe for some weeks or months, you feel happy, but then you repeat the nonsense if you don't make the clean shift. That's why I don't, I don't want to be a healer or a guru anymore. Um, because for me, the self-mastery was you have to understand your way. Mm -hmm. And it's very it's much easier to be a guru. It's much easier to be a healer instead of really teaching self-mastery because people will go away from you. I agree. Yeah. And that I felt like, oh, I have like 500 people in, in the groups from the force in you. And I have maybe like 10 people who really want to go to the next level. Other people just came to see if I'm fake or if they can receive some healing. Mostly no one wants to go into a higher level of self-mastery. Yeah, you're because, right. And that's the problem with the ego. Why do you come to me? Ah, you have a certain question. And if you give you the answer, will you stay or not? Mm -hmm. And that's why the old masters never gave the answers. Or even there's a saying, I think in India, if you don't ask me like seven times, I will, won't say it to you. And when I just think about my first experience about contactless fighting with one Aikido master, um, I was four days at the seminars and I felt like, oh, everything what he's saying is so basic, what I'm doing here. And then four days, it was just four exercises, what was good for me, what I would say. And he asked me to come here and he punched me when we were sitting just on the chest and I was falling two meters back. I said, okay, something is going on here. And we did one exercise where we fully emptied the mind and the energy body starts to collapse and you start laughing. And I had no idea what is it doing, what is it for? And I and another old student from him was one of the only people from the 20 people in the seminar who could do this. And so I was writing in an email and, but I didn't get a right answer what I wanted to, because I wanted to know what is it doing? Because I also feel I lose a lot of energy when I do it. Because mm -hmm. I can't read that often. It's like I switch off like a zombie and then boom, and then it's just starts laughing. And then I was like, oh, what is this teacher who don't give me answers or don't support or whatever? And I met other people who were also very unhappy about him. But this actually brought me to question much more and start to investigate about all about why is empty force working, how many names are for this in many cultures. Are, are this present from Indonesia, blah, blah, blah. I think I found more than 20 names about this internal martial arts, about like sending energy. And I think this brought me to a, a new journey. And I see, um, because when you have so much information, you love to share because it's, yeah, it's just nice information and you're happy to share everything. The problem is the people are not you. <laughs> and that's the main thing and the, our ego always like identify with the other person oh you have to understand this I'm understanding it and that's our main problem we start immediately start to connect and say oh do this do this do this and then I see hey I never asked what you want I just was like giving you a big, big present but you can't even understand this little bit yeah it's like I give you 5,000 um, magical books but you can't read one because you have this 5,000. was like, what should I do with this now? And then you just push it away because it's too much. And this was mainly my problem many times in my seminars because I gave too much, but I also didn't want to cut myself down. I said, hey, I'm, I love to share, I love to help. And but then I saw like people really got crazy when I gave them too much power. You really got <laughs> mental. Because when you give too much energy and like, there is no structure, then you just give energy to the nonsense what the people have. And I had in the last four years, like four people who really got crazy and then fighting against me. <laughs> yes. And so that was like my learning later on. I said, oh, fuck, I want always of the best intent. I want to help. I want, to, I am happy to see your development because this is meaning being a teacher. And I wanted you are better than me and faster than me. Otherwise, I wouldn't be a good teacher. And I think that's why you should question your teacher always. Oh, do you want that I'm faster and better than you? And you will see how he will look at you. <laughs> so cool, for cool. me, I saw like there are many people who are good in one thing, 
but then there's missing maybe the heart or missing the mind or missing whatever. Yeah. And right. so, so just pick the thing what this person can give you in the right moment, what you re need right now. And till now I found maybe two teachers where I would say, wow, there's very nice information. They are very long trained in this. But then you know, okay, I just need this. And then you just honor him for this, what he's giving you. Right. Um, Alex, so uh, you travel the world often. Um, how often do you travel uh, throughout uh, in a year, would you say? I traveled the last eight years, maybe in 40 countries. 40 countries. Wow. Okay. Okay. I, I think so, I traveled totally 50. But the okay, last very, eight years, I was around. Very cool. So, so Alex, you know, you've traveled around and stuff like that. You met many masters. Um, what, what, what would you say is the most pro impressive master that you've ever came across as far as like uh, um, abilities, spiritual abilities go? I wouldn't even say master. For me, uh, the human being, the most important thing. When I see a human being, I'm just touched by my heart. And it can be a child. It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. Good, good answer. Uh, yeah, in this moment, so, oh, wow, this child just touched my heart. Yeah, that's a good answer. It's already the, the biggest master. And I've had one very interesting experience. I think it was in Sedona, where <laughs> I'm just a little bit craziness. <laughs> and I felt, oh, I have to go. There was one guy doing a meditation evening. And I, I was traveling with an older woman, and she was doing also quantum healing for more than 10 years, connected with Monroe Institute and a lot of other stuff. We went there. And I looked at him and I said, hello, father. They looked at me like, because it was for me the first time that I really saw someone who was much older than me. And also like this energetic feeling what I had and it was like, wow, I was like, it's something, you know, there's a soul family and I say, oh, this was my mother, this is my brother. This is, that was the first time for me. It was like, oh fuck, he's so fucking old. I was just full of gratefulness <laughs> to see him. And then we were sitting, it was like me and my friend, there was no other person later. And then he asked, oh, what can I do for you? I said, Nothing, I'm just happy that I see you finally. <laughs> and then he said, hey, do you know that's a dragon sitting on your side? I said, um, yes, we know. <laughs> <laughs> because we did a lot of crazy stuff. We started to create energetic dragons in the metaphysical realm. And I didn't really believe myself, but if another person can see it, then I was like, oh, shit, this is really real what we have done. Uh -huh. And yeah, <laughs> crazy things. What do you say? But it's a nice connection later. So I traveled in states. I think two weeks with a with a woman um, from LA to Manchester, Sedona, Phoenix, then back then to New York, and there was also what is called Lightfield Foundation in Chester. It's I think three hours away from New York City, where they have a big um, football like sacred geometry and on the fourth day i started to levitate on the other called grace way on the on on uh, i'm sorry alex did, did you say levitate i couldn't hear you yeah. levitate like levitate your body yeah oh wow that is cool so yeah, I, love, I love that subject <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> and this was weird like what the heck after the four days and so I, I think the most important thing is it doesn't matter what you want to do is to fully let go of all the concepts, what you have, be playful. And I think this is the fastest way to achieve something. Mm. doesn't matter what it is. Let go of wanting, be it. Yeah. It, it, energy likes the least resistance too. Huh? Right, right, right. I mean, like That's when you comment on because my, my videos, saying let go that one time or, or you, you you know you commented on or actually you commented on i'm in you know performing telekinesis and you gave me a tip saying that can you're in wanting just let go and i took your advice and then a week later i was able to do it you know and uh that was nice. you really helped me you guys really i mean i grew leaps and bounds like uh you know uh living with almond and i uh, you know you know you know t you know doing everything almonds teaching me and stuff like that but really just that little little tip that you gave me really just 
helped me out tremendously and grow my uh, telekinetic abilities and stuff like that. And now I'm like moving stuff. I'm going to be uploading a demonstration soon where I, I uh, um, uh, was, I, I moved something, uh, you know, uh, inside seal container over the internet and stuff like that. So, I mean, yeah, just the, the letting go is so true. And, you know, it's, it's so profound. Yeah. Even, just, you have to be it's, careful. It's, like, yeah. I mean, you have to be careful. We can always start, even start flying away. <laughs> Very soon. And that's easy. Yeah. yeah. Um, the thing was, because when I tested the first time a Psy wheel, I was like sitting there and trying, trying to feel the energy in my hand. And actually nothing was moving. And when I looked away, I just looked at, said, okay, I look around, maybe it's working, I was looking on my phone. And then it started moving and there was no wind. I said, what the fuck? And for me, the what I teach in self-mastery is like all with all the healing, it's the same thing. I always say the negative version of my wanting that you can feel because the wanting creates the tension in your mind and body. Yeah. Oh, I want telekinesis. No, say, repeat for all people out there. Repeat 10 times. I, I don't that. want to learn telekinesis. I don't want to be an energy master. I don't want to be a healer. I don't want to achieve anything in my life. And then you can feel the tension because of your belief. And then you say, oh, I am telekinesis because there is no separation. Very wise words. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just it's true, it's true though. It's, it's you have to let I, go of the attachments of things because they are, they do block your energy up uh, mentally and physically. They get trapped because the desire is one thing. You're not having it, so you're going for it. That's what I when I did my first telekinesis uh, course over internet. Then it was sometimes okay. The shit is, <laughs> the shit is <laughs> you have to. F I feel the participants, and then I have to feel also what's going on in my room. And I heard, oh wow, I have a lot of tension now because I do healing. I opening their channels, and the same time I should show how it's working. And then I really had to separate one time my energy to fully come back in here to go. Oh, it doesn't matter if I can do it now or not because otherwise you create a tension because you say, oh, I have to do it now in front of other people, otherwise people won't believe me or whatever. So this is all our conflict the whole time. And when you can let go of your wanting that something is working, then things are happening so easy. Mm -hmm. And I had the first experience that I remember when I said I always stop breaking, break dancing, b-boying. Because so why should I train like so many hours just to do one movement? That's not dance. And as soon as I stopped, in the same week, I got on two days more than six phone calls. Just for, Alex, do you want to do show there? Do you want to do show there? So what the heck? First, I was trying to get money to make a bigger culture here in my town. And then I say, I will stop everything and everything comes by itself to me. And so I understood this. Um, pass of the least resistance or this rubber band first you go fully in and then you let go and then it just comes back mm. and that's the problem what i saw in all the professional sports because you can train let's say 10 15 years and you become a professional it doesn't matter what you want but later people are burned out and they don't know what they're here they are tired they die with 50 or 60 because they, they didn't listen to the body, because it was always just about this goal. And for me, it was my brother wrote me uh, for my birthday a text like who I am, that I'm running to every mountain. And before I got to the peak, I ran to the next mountain, next mountain, next mountain. And then I understood, I think two years, three years later, fuck, I don't finish what I start. How? How can I get um, the money with anything or the achievement when I always stop before I get professional in this or that or this because, because you're afraid of success or you're afraid of failure. Mm -hmm. And I was teaching also other athletes. There was a guy who was falling in front of the finisher line, 10 meters in front of the finisher line. But then when you run 200 meters, <laughs> you're fucked up. And he had this problem like three times in the competition. And then I was working with hypnosis with him a little bit. And then he could again um, win. But that's the problem with our mind so much. And so for me, the most important thing is still mind, but don't forget your body. Mm -hmm. 
because the last eight years I said, ah, I don't want to train anymore, everything is mine. And my physique stayed the same because I knew I can do everything. So I still had the power to jump on one hand to do backflips. Um, but of course, it's not the same conditioning anymore. And then I felt, oh, but with sport, you train your organs and all everything. So all the hormones that is also connected with your emotion. Mm -hmm. And when you become like a little bit lazy, so your mind becomes lazy. Yeah. Your hormones is like constantly you got um, affected from all the emotions, what you created inside, what you haven't solved and what you feel from the outside, what don't belongs to you. Yeah. Because what yeah. is if 99% of what you feel and think is collective field? What if you, what you believe is just 1%? Then you see that actually, hey, this anger is from my mother, not from me. This thought is from the bus driver, not from me. And this you only get how more you get awareness about what's really going on. Otherwise, you start to identify with everything and say, oh, this pain. But no, it's not mine. Breathe it out. And it's away in one minute. Mm -hmm. But what is the gain to have this pain? Why you go in resonance with this pain? Mm -hmm. And this brought me to a much higher level later because I said, oh, again, I take the emotions from my mother because I'm in the house here. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Breathe it out. Thanks. I know who I am. And when you're in different stages, you don't even need to do this anymore. But uh, there's also like shift. Sometimes you're four months in a stage where you don't identify with ever, anything. So it's like you do touch your body. Like, Who is this? It's very weird. <laughs> you look from behind, from the side. You just observe. And say, you are a fucking crazy reality. Like, Who well, are even you? I'm talking now. <laughs> and you just thought. So there are a lot of crazy things that happen. Yeah. <laughs> Life's a trip all by itself, naturally. <laughs> all the time. LSD trip all the time. <laughs> and I think many people are not ready for this because this means that you don't have control. Mm -hmm. And this is the biggest thing for the ego. I want to understand and I want to have control. And yeah, it's not working. <laughs> you don't have control. Yeah, what there's, is, don't no, have a free <laughs> there's, there's like there's that one perfect spot where there's no words at all. Like it, there, you can't be like it's this or that labeling this or right. that isn't the right answer is like there's no no words like right right <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean everything Alex is saying you know hit is hitting me hard because I'm constantly <laughs> asking I'm in like you know hey I'm in you know I want to be like John Chang teach me Mopai teach me Mei Gong and like all this stuff but really you know uh, you know I. I like Alex said, you just have to, you know, be in that playful state and you don't have to do naked going. You don't have to do fill the Dantian and all this stuff. You can do anything, you know, and that's, that's something that's really hit me hard recently and stuff like that. And that's why I think I've been advancing so much in my abilities lately is because I really, I've been really taking everything these guys uh, have been saying to heart and stuff like that. So. Um, I totally understand why we are searching because I was a long time on the search and now I would say I'm not on the search, I just explore. So, but first the search is this fire. You want to know. And the thing is, this motivation we have till to the age 25, let's say, mm -hmm. from remembering spastics, then you need something um, called a pull. The same with training. I need a pull that I will do it. And I just started again to train motivation in me to see, okay, what do I want? And there are also different trainings for do that. And because otherwise I'm like, I'm getting, I'm getting 36, I have to say, in three months. <laughs> and then you already feel that you're in pension. You feel like you're 90, you're 150 years old because there's nothing to do anymore. You don't need anything. And some people at that age say, oh, I want to die. Life is tired. There is no reason for anything. And... The good thing is you can go already now through these processes and stay alive till 150, but be, being fully a child and being fully joyful and alive. And I think this is what we lost. It doesn't matter if you're now 20, because I see already people who are dead with 20 already, <laughs> or you're 100. Mm -hmm. I think even like people who achieved a lot of big things are still like craving for something more. 
just think back. First, the biggest craving was, oh, I want to move a psi wheel. But now it must be the next. It must be the next. It must be the next. It's like running in a, in a hamster wheel. And so there is never this fulfillment. I still do my stuff, but not for the, the sake of, oh, I have to achieve this now. And then it comes easy. And then you also like align with yourself because there is no tension or pressure or, oh, I have to, I'm getting 36. Do I need a wife now? Do I have to the house now? Do, do I need to levitate now? Or <laughs> I can show the world that everything is possible. It's, it doesn't, that was the fear, what I told you before, I did everything to 90%. And then the last, last 10%, I didn't want it to achieve because I don't want to identify or I didn't allow myself to be rich in this or whatever. These are all just subconscious programs. I have similar experiences. Like uh, one time I was, I went for Chinese medicine and I, I stopped before I became like a degree. Uh, same with mas massage stuff. I stopped before I did that. Even music with uh, musicians. I was working with famous people, but then I stopped. Like you know. <laughs> That's, That's why I feel you because I, I know we have the same way. Even without knowing you, I know, oh, look, another me. <laughs> yeah. I see you. <laughs> yeah. And that's when you feel immediately by looking at someone, oh, there's this connection. We had like the similar, similar life experiences. And then I was just, oh, but what is possible for you now? What do you need to finish? And why are you afraid of finishing? And can you release all this stuff now? When are you fully happy in your present? It doesn't matter if you finish or not. That's the other thing. Otherwise, you say, oh, I'm only happy when I have achieved this or that. Yeah, and then and what? Then you have to find something else. <laughs> no, when there is uh, just... No, when you finish one thing, right? It's just you're going to want... Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you do just something, but there's no need to do it. I think yeah. this is the difference. Yeah. You do it out because it's just here. It's that, oh, I want to play the piano, and then I play the piano. Ken sees and... me doing that now, right? So now I just do, <laughs> do this just for because I want to, you know? It's just not because I, I have to do it. Right, to, right. Um, one of the things that's really surprised me is, you know, like when I first moved in with Amin, I was thinking like, oh, this is, this guy's going to probably make me meditate for eight hours a day and stuff like that. And like, I'm going to do talking. Just to drunk, hey, like, you know, like, <laughs> hey, let's just have fun. Like, it's just, it's, it's, it's a, it, it really surprised me, you know, and, and uh, how, how Amin lives his life and stuff like that. And uh, I, I feel like Alex kind of embodies that same kind of mindset, you know, and because before I moved in with Amin, it was, I was just so stuck on just, you know, oh, I'm like, I got to impress people. I got to, you know, be levitating like Ernst Vader or whatever. And you know what I'm saying? Like, that's my goal and stuff. But now I'm starting to have a different outlook in life, you know, and so everything yeah. Alex is saying is true. Yeah. Even in martial art, because for me, it's like there are nice concepts, what you may integrate and maybe you understand, but then it's, or sometimes it's just a belief. For me, was the reason why I, what I teach is that it's not just a belief. You can immediately experience on the physical level that what I'm saying is right. So when I try to push you physically, you immediately go into resistance because you don't want to get pushed. When I invite you like a child, Huh, come with me, immediately I can push you many meters away because you don't have a resistance, because you don't feel like I want to attack you because I just love to play with you. And this is the power what we have as a child. Yeah. That we just grab something because we are fully in the hand now. Look at babies, how strong they are when they grab the mother by the hair or whatever. They have so much power because they're full embodied. And why do we all love to look into babies' eyes? Because they're not programmed yet. Mm -hmm. They can see much more the essence. Yeah. And we also can come back. That's why, of course, it's good to, to train your Dantian to feel it, do the alchemy process because your organ gets younger. But of course, there are also other ways. Or maybe who knows that you need a way. Maybe you just get enlightened by falling down the stairs, whatever. You don't know your way. You have no idea about of all the universe, what's going on. I think we are so trained in like the whole Western and Europe, just we have to have um, uh, constructs, build a construct. Not only concept, but always going forward, achievements. That was yeah, the achievements. And that too. That's, yeah. And this, you feel the difference 
I think the first time I went to South America in 2006, it was like, oh, I, I came, I was um, professional sport at that time. I was, oh, I have to run every day in the morning to get somewhere. <laughs> and then you just meet people who are constantly just in their heart, just enjoying, drinking, observing. And that's also a kind of like meditative state because they are much more in now because you are still thinking, oh, how many hours do I have to train now? Or what do I have to finish now? Instead of just letting allow to be connected with the day and what is it's like you want to finish like a text and you really press hard or oh, have to finish this finish this finish this or like studying people hate studying because nobody gets taught how to study you already learn how to pressure it and then you get all the problems with the eyes and your mind whatever and then the other method where you teach playfully, like in Russia, there are schools where children learn English on the weekend. So what the heck? What? Yes. Oh, okay. Can you tell me a little more about that? Is there like a like an institute that teaches that? Yeah, yeah, called the Shiitan School. They do all this play. We I'm started. Sorry, what what is it called? Can you spell it out? I, I, will write, it I will write it later for you. Because yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you very much. Telling. And so there are a lot of methods like this. I think there's one book what you can look for in, there's a, a page called PDF drive or book.cc where you can f download free PDF files. And it's called Super Learning from, I think, Ostrand or something. It was in Russia in the 70s, 80s where they did all the projects with the psi and with hypnosis that people thought that Picasso and the children were painting like Picasso or like remembering the past lives. And there are so many things in that. Yeah, children are amazing. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, because you are in an alpha state, and therefore you believe everything. That's the reason why you are hurt also from your childhood, because you believe yeah. your parents and then find out they lie to you. Yeah. Yeah, it's because you absorb everything when you're in that during learning state with that alpha state. So very. You are a big sponge. And I have a very good thing what, what came to me. I was like, I was also a very headed person because um like a blockhead because i came from discipline sport and i was first a mechanic and my father was a teacher my brother and my sister's a teacher so you're all the time in this mind crap and the first time i experienced much more to be a human was with quantum healing when i was 23 i think 24 and then i had this wow when you connect your right brain to your heart and you open the field everything is possible and I felt like Harry Potter I was like what else is possible and this was the first time where I came out of this oh I have to hmm, fight so hard to achieve something to be something to have a right to be on this earth to have a right to get accepted from my family or from my friends but it's a problem if you don't accept yourself no one will accept you yeah. and then yeah. I figured out the same thing with my father I was looking for respect from my father and the love from my father that, hey, no one can give me love or respect than only me myself and then you finally start to grow because you don't depend on other opinions anymore it's not it doesn't mean that i don't want other opinions i'm happy so i would call her hey, Emin. what do you feel with this nonsense what i have now because it's nice to have a mirror for exchanging so people want to separate because they are learned to separate in right and wrong but for me, there's no separation. I, I'm happy to have every point of view and then I just try out and play and see what is possible. And I think that's the most important thing. It's everything is much faster when you play. Yes. yes. So, learning needs to be fun anyways. <laughs> just think on school. It's 90% <laughs> of the schools are shit. I think there is one in Costa Rica, uh, Nicaragua. <laughs> yeah, because there is constant this pressure. And in this life school, what we have in Austria, I was teaching there um, one we, um, one time Taekwondo and also um, hip hop. And there was one question for me, okay, what is the essence of hip hop? And people believe on hip hop was the first thing what you get in your mind. And most of the people have the picture of Oh, the pants are under the ass and they look dangerous. <laughs> that's the first picture what people have who don't understand hip hop, but that's the main thing. And then I was, okay, what is the first movement in hip hop? And I, and I thought, oh, actually it's this bouncing. It comes from the center. And then I was questioning, okay, why um, people are wearing the pants under the ass? Actually, that came from the prison. 
because they didn't have the belt anymore. So the pants were down when they came out from the jail. And what do you need to survive in a very dangerous place? You have to be dangerous looking. You have to be an uh, aggressor that people don't attack you. Mm -hmm. That's why, okay, then I think, oh, fuck, with what did I grow up? I grew up with Taekwondo. What is the meaning of Taekwondo? It's all by the feet. You have distance. Don't come close to me. Then with hip hop, it's like, oh, I'm crazy in breakdancing. You have to give me respect because I'm crazy. And this I found out, oh, all the sports, what we do is because of a certain mind layer, because we have a certain pain, what we want to um, fill, actually, yeah. or, or compress. And then I was like, okay, wow, what is the essence of the hip hop? What is the techno? What did I grow up? And there's one technique in native learning, it's called, that I'm not allowed to talk. I'm not allowed to show it. I have to bring you into the position that you can feel what I do. So you look at my mouse and then I just give you the movement like of bowing down because I was thinking, what's the first movement of Taekwondo? Actually you go into the dojo and you bow down and then you, you, um, you clap on your legs. And then was, ah, okay, what is this meaning? This respect. And then I just was teaching this movement of just like bowing down 20 people and I just had to teach it precisely to one person and when this person understand it's 100% it gives to the next person this we have done later on we were standing in front of other just doing this and I was like after doing 20 times just going back and clapping to the legs said I have to go away otherwise I will kill you there was so much energy coming up just by this easy movement and then I understood, okay, what else is this meaning? This is meaning I'm ready. And why do I, I, I punch my legs? Because my legs have to be ready for fight or flight. That's why I activate it on the side by pushing here. Mm -hmm. But wow, what the heck? There were so many insights just by understanding of one easy movement what most of people don't know. And you have this in every sport. There's one essence why this movement got created. And why this culture created this sport, then you know the culture. So you have to become the culture to become the sports. Otherwise, you're just um, repeating a movement, but you are not. The same with dancing. You have to be salsa. You have to be hip hop. Yeah. It's not like I'm doing crazy moves, but then you really feel like, oh, I can't watch him. He's doing amazing move, but I can't feel his heart because he's just doing it for this or that. He, he didn't become it yet. And that was so crazy for me when I saw, wow, I can teach Taekwondo in one month just the essence or like the hip hop later when I was teaching hip hop, I was still like a little bit too um, not fluid to say for hip hop because I came from fighting and I came from classical dance. So it was for me, the top rocks were sometimes very hard to have this bouncing. But when I started teaching the bounce to the children, my top rocks were much more flowing, waterly, much people said, oh, wow, your top rocks dancing is much better now. Yeah, because finally I understood everything comes from the center. And then everything just got created out from this bounce, out from the center. And every sport is depends on your center. That's why I, would, I was good in later in every sport, because my center was strong, because I was training um, very hard uh, on the abdominals with 100 kilos, standing people on it and doing crazy things when I was 60, 70s, because, uh, because I just was crazy. <laughs> because I liked the pain. I, I liked because the only way to really feel me was through physical pain because your emotional pain you don't want to feel from your childhood that's the reason why you want to give you all this pain on the outside so or hitting yourself conditioning um, but actually you go away from the body it's like if you are if you get punched sometimes your emotional body goes out and then it comes back that's why you sometimes don't feel the pain because you go into a trance state. That's why you can hold long positions or whatever. And you can go over fire. It's just that you go into a different state of mind. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. so Alex, um, you know, <laughs> I, I briefly asked you about it, uh, you know, on Julia's uh, pod, or radio show. What, well, radio show forward slash podcast, whatever, um, <laughs> about the rainbow body. <laughs> you, you know, you, you didn't get to really answer it at the time. Um, 
is that still your goal? Is that still something that you want to achieve? Mm, not really. Oh, not anymore. Okay, could, could you explain that a little bit? <laughs> um, because at the moment I'm, how to say this? I don't have a specific goal at the moment because otherwise I, I would need to know what, <laughs> and then I would have a separation of that what I am right now is not enough. So the thing is, things are coming to you and you just do it. Mm -hmm. And it's more now my, my things, what is coming as, okay, what, what do I like to do? And from all the experience, I just want to say, okay, what, what is making my body happy? I'm also like ready now to, to train. I want, mm -hmm. I got invited from Mark Rasmus to come to Thailand to train with him. I was like, oh, wow, thank you very nice because he's a very, very high level in all the hermetics and all the stuff that he's doing for many years. And, but the thing is now the borders with Thailand, it's fucked up everything. And so I, I also was like, oh, I felt like, oh, I'm going to Mexico, I buy land there. So at the moment, everything in my life is integration. I think I will I will talk differently if you ask me again in three months because then I have a different life period and I will tell you different things. But just by now, I'm just in an integration mode. That means I'm at home, I'm reading books, I'm writing some stuff, I'm in a mentoring press. I live a very normal life at the moment. I try to train a little bit, sometimes some ping pong, uh, going a little bit slack a little bit running. Actually, there are not many plans at the moment, just like a little bit observing let's say myself or whatever is here <laughs> and just like doing what is going on because I think we all live now in a complex um, collective cloud where nobody know what's really going on. And so sometimes you just get the impulse, okay, one month I will go away because I don't want to look at this global stupidity and to just go to a country where there's no dictatorship and uh, maybe 10 about you now where you can go without all this nonsense what's going on. And yeah, so the rainbow body, if you go into Buddhism and say, okay, you have 13 years, no, no bad thought anymore. And for me, it's not, okay, why do we still separate in mastery and living a normal life? And that was me strongly, okay, do I want to have a wife now? Do you, or do I want to go into self-mastery and train teleportation, levitation and come back and say, oh, I'm the new Messiah. <laughs> just to see what else is possible. So because for me, because I was such a weak person with so many illness, everything what I've done was not to show like, oh, look at me, I'm good now. It was all the time I tried to go beyond my weakness to tell everyone, hey, if I can do it, you can do it too. And that was my main thing from, from my childhood. Because I was always the weakest, I had so many sickness, and that's what, for me, like, even if you look now, all the masters mostly don't share anything personally. It's just, oh, because they don't want it, you have a judgment about their past, just do what I say, because I'm the master. And for me, I found out, no, how more I open myself, how more you can see that, oh, I also had a very shitty life till I came here where I am now, then you see everything is possible. And then you allow it that things can happen much faster instead of just like touching my feet and getting my blessings. <laughs> Sorry, I have to laugh about all this stuff. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. We are all humans. We all have a story. We all have pain. We all have something. And how more we allow to go into this pain and say, hey, look, I'm weak now. And I'm happy that you see my weakness now. And I'm happy to see your weakness now. At the same time, I see your love. I see your journey. And I'm just happy that we're all here. And this is the appreciation of what is going on. Instead of otherwise, I just would, I mean, I mean, show me how to teleport, fucker. Give me the, the answer or whatever. Then if you give me the answer. And if you don't give me the answer, then I don't have connection with you anymore because you didn't give me what I want. That's all the ego problem that we have. And that's the reason why the masters mostly gave wrong 
exercises and that we have so many wrong exercises in the whole China. They give you a maximum 10% of real knowledge. In Russia, you get 20. And there's, of course, there must be a lot of secrecy because otherwise you harm yourself. Yeah. And I always thought of... Without, oh, with, without the self-mastery of yourself, I mean, then you are going to hurt yourself for yeah. sure. With the... <laughs> yeah. And this is what I just figured out. So though I, I pushed myself so much in so many things until I realized for what. And I had one depression 2009. And I was on the Amazon on a big boat with my brother traveling and I was unhappy. I said, what the heck is going on? I have an amazing life and I'm unhappy. I'm in the fucking Amazon. People are freezing with minus 15 degrees in Austria. I'm in fucking heaven here and I can't be happy. How is this even possible? And my brother were making jokes about me, but I didn't understood because it wasn't a real depression. Just like, where is my happiness gone? And then I was sitting on this big noisy boat and looking into the ocean and I, I found sometimes something inside started moving. I just went into the state of being grateful what it is. And I think the biggest problem is people always looking for a shortcut or avoiding bad feelings instead of just loving the bad feelings what we have. It's not even ours, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just like knowing, oh, there is anxiety. Oh, there is anger. Oh, this is because of this element in my body or this is because I feel this from that person. I think the most important thing, it doesn't matter what you do, is awareness. Not even love, awareness. Because sometimes people who are just in the state or love, they also have no awareness anymore. Look at children who are hyper, then they're running into a door. They are in full love, but they have no awareness. <laughs> and I think, or like if you look at the esoteric people, they just want to be human. Oh, I love you, I love me, blah, 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 blah. And But then they don't get any physical out in the world because they just want to be in their own bubble. And that's because the grounding, the life is missing, money is missing. And then they just, oh, don't say this or that because they have so many conflicts in the self if they can't feel love. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say it doesn't matter what you do, just do it with easiness, joy and awareness. And then all the fruits are coming to you what you want to have. Yep, very good. Very well said. Very well said. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, like I said, everything Alex is saying is hitting me so hard. And uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's very well. basic concept that I need to just keep reminding myself over and over and over again. Just let go and don't worry about, you know, becoming a grandmaster overnight and stuff like that, you know. And um, in fact, just abilities and all that it's really not that important you know just just be, be uh, what i can tell you what you believe is a grandmaster mostly are still a hurt child mm, oh yeah no that's because very i wouldn't say that anyone i met is a grandmaster i haven't seen him yet i see people who are in a good love state i've seen people who trained very hard for one achievement mm -hmm. but i haven't seen a master yet i read a lot about masters but that's also the thing, like, mm, what is your position here now? Do you want just to be a bar master that people believe that you are something? Or do you want to be a human being? And I think we are all, all the time. Because now I'm just here to share my experiences with you guys. Then I'm teaching a whole week and I'm just in a love state. And you can ask me everything and there are different information coming up. And then I'm fully just in my human being. I just want to train on my bicycle for two hours. And I don't, people making so much separation in what is spiritual and what not. Or you just say something mean now. And people say, oh, you can't say this because you're a spiritual teacher. That you have no idea what it means to be a spiritual teacher because there's still a point of views about it. Yeah. And so you feel sometimes you have to be mean to a person just because it works. And I think many times we don't understand why people are even there are many mean masters <laughs> and why are they mean? We have so many judgments of how we want to get um, treated because it's our own lag, our own vulnerability, well, can't talk anymore, <laughs> our own pain, what we don't like to look at. Oh, we're looking constantly for our comfort zone. And I wouldn't ever say that I'm out of this 
whole program. I'm constantly going forward and I see, oh, and when I need help, I, I ask other people also for a session when I feel I need the other opinion now. And sometimes you have like years where you don't want to have any massage from anyone. So this is, don't get stuck in anything. And that's for me, okay, one time I want to have massages or sex for one week, and then you don't even want to get touched for some months because you're in a different process. And that's yeah. the main problem from our mind that we want to make things solid to feel safe in a reality what don't really exist. Yeah, yeah, very, very well said, Alex. That's very good. Yeah, yeah, the very, very well said. Wise. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead on. No, I think he's just. I heard wise. it all from Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy the similarities that you guys have too. Like you know, Almond was a Taekwondo practitioner as well, and uh, he's into hip hop, you know, very much. He's a rapper and stuff like that. So it's really cool to see the similar similarities that you guys have and uh, some very interesting experiences and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. Um, so just w one one last question, Almond. So you know, our sorry. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Um, well, one last question, Alex. So, oh, wait, so just interview. <laughs> you, said that you don't really uh, know at this point what you want to achieve in life and stuff like that. You're just kind of exploring life, so to speak. Um, but, but do you kind of see the final destination, though, like a, a, where you know humanity I should be? I had the movie now in my mind when you said final destination. <laughs> Oh, like this? This is the horror movie? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but do, do you do you kind of like what what do you want the world to be like ultimately and stuff like that? You mentioned that you know we're living in uncertain times and stuff like that. What what do you envision the world to be in the future? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a tough question, huh? That's a very tough question, actually, because there are many timelines at the same time. So yeah. I felt like something unhappy will go on now in November. There's a big cleaning going on. They want to create a big reset next year that um, they say, oh, we say about climate change, that we do more lockdowns in the whole world and we that all the little companies will go away and then we just have big companies, what we are lacking from that everything will be fully controlled like a totality regime like in china in some regions so this is all possibility was going on in the background at the same time you see all the pedophile and satanism crap is coming up now with trump and Biden, and you see so many things what's going on at the moment so for me i don't care about the world i have to say because i am not the world how can i and at the same time, I am at the world, of course, am I? <laughs> but at the main time, the most time, I'm just in this body. And in this body, I just embody a certain character. And this character just has just some certain influence to certain people. So the most important thing is first that you have to clean out all your own nonsense. Yeah. And for me was, for my future, oh, I'm fully ready to find a woman to that we connect in and young or whatever. But this is just like, how can I tell you something about the future when the future is changing every day in my life? I can't tell you. It's constantly changing. And even now, with the energy, I don't even know. Two weeks ago, I said, oh, I go to Mexico and buy one hectare over there. And now it's like, I don't feel an impulse anymore. I think that's it's very hard to say anything about future, at least for me, because I don't have identification. When I have a pull, I go there, I do it. I don't think too much. Because thinking is only past. I can only put past puzzle together and then say, oh, this is my thoughts. No, it's just nonsense. Yeah, that's the construct kind of building. Thing. That's the thing, like when you want to have answers, because all... I feel even we are more in future stress than past stress because your thoughts mostly is every day, oh, what do I do tomorrow or next week, in a month, for the evening? So you're not in the present. You're not feeling actually right now what is that's nothing to do and just to be. Yeah, people yeah. like to, to thinking ahead, where they're going to go later, who they're going to see, what they're going to say when they see that person, yeah. how the scenario maybe will play out, you know? 
I, I had I even had stress the last months um, where I felt, oh, I don't want to be in Austria now. I want to go somewhere. But at the same time, I had no pull to go somewhere. And I was like, fuck. I had this inner conflict. I know there's actually nothing to do. Life is perfect. And at the same time, I felt this inner pressure. Oh, I finally want to know. And that's a problem. As long as you want to know, you're far away from knowing. <laughs> And I just figured, oh, who is this part of me who wants to know now? Why do I need to know? You don't need to know. Things are coming and to do it. And that's uh, the problem with our mind. Yeah. And about what goes to ask, oh, is my achievement a rainbow body? <laughs> I don't know. If I, if I feel it will come, then it will come. Yeah. It's not something where I have to make the checklist. Oh, I have to achieve this in my life. Maybe I have a better next life in another planet system. <laughs> No, I remember my other planet systems. It's just everywhere the same game. <laughs> <laughs> um, very cool, very cool. Any final thoughts that you have, uh, Amon? Um, no, I just want to say thank you for Alex, and it's always nice to get information from him. You know, says he's very wise, and um, yeah. and we can take that. Uh, being like a kid is the best. Being loving and having awareness is the way to mm. go. I want actually to share something with you both. Yeah. Um, or with everyone who is watching now. Just close your eyes and relax. And invite now your hologram of your own perfect self, what you feel what is full of love and easiness. That you know you are guided and everything comes to you with ease and joy. And you don't need to think about anything. You have to get out of the way of your belief and allow and ask maybe every morning, like what else can I receive today to live an amazing day. What am I allowed? And what is possible for me now to receive? It doesn't matter what. And everything that doesn't allow you to receive that all your dreams, your positive wishes come true, please change it on all levels and dimensions now where you still have contracts that you're not allowed to be happy, that you're not allowed to be rich, that you're not allowed to be loving and kind to yourself. Everywhere where you still work hard against yourself, please change it. Everywhere where you don't pat yourself loving and respecting and loving your whole being with every aspect of yourself. Please change it. If you want, you can touch your heart, put the hand on your chest and just feel that you are fucking amazing. <laughs> Thanks for being you. Thank you that you're here. Thank you that we're all here. I love you, I love me, I love my body, my body loves me, I love this world, the world loves me. Thank you so much. And remember this every morning and every time before you start sleeping. Just these little short sentences, write them down and feel the essence of it. Before you sleep, lay on your back, put the hands on your chest and say, hey, what else is possible for me? What can I be and do what nobody else can? What can I bring in this world? What can I embody in this world? That's very nice. <laughs> Thank you for that. Very cool, Alex. Yeah, that was very powerful meditation. Yeah, so. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Alex. But you're a uh, you. phenomenal guy, and uh, um, you know, I, I honestly can ask really Alex a million more questions. But really, I think <laughs> Alex is going to give give us 
the right answer just because you know when it comes to specific stuff like how do you do empty force how do you do telekinesis how do you astral projector whatever it might be alex is just going to say you know just be in that playful state you know it's just that, and it, it really is that simple and uh we shouldn't get too wrapped up wrapped around techniques and just that's that's the biggest thing that i think alex is reminding us all so yeah mm -hmm. I think the techniques later come by itself because every person who have wandered on this earth, how people invented something, how people came to a movement. Why do you start dancing on this movement or this step? All these basics comes from here, mm -hmm. from here. Yeah. And I think this we lost because we have so much information. We try to, um, repeat other information instead of asking what else is possible for us to be really the unique you instead of just a copycat from something yeah and then you figure out oh there are faster ways in alchemy what nobody have considered yet oh there are faster ways in empty force what i have not considered yet but this i only can figure out when i stay at the question without wanting an answer being like a child questioning oh what is possible and then boom so fuck this is working mm -hmm. That's evolution, a little bit. Alex, <laughs> I don't know if you see the chat box, but everybody is thanking you. So. No, oh, no, I don't see the chat box. Okay. Thank you guys for listening. Yeah. See you soon somewhere. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. So, I uh, thank you guys for coming on, and uh, we will continue to uh, continue to make to do these amazing interviews and stuff like that, and continue to you know make. Um, Content, one thing so. one thing before we go, oh, yeah, go Alex, uh, make sure you send us any links that you want us to have so we can put in the description. Oh, below. About, the, about the Russian school, you mean? Oh, no, no. I mean about your stuff, anything you want. Ah, uh, there is just, I have like the two homepages. The one with my name, what you see here, and the other one is the force in you.com. Okay, so Alex. Uh, and I mean, the YouTube is the Craig. There are also some texts on it. Okay. And I hope I get the motivation to finish my books. <laughs> All right. All right. So Ken, after we're done with this video, we'll me and him will put the stuff Perfect. in the description for you. Okay. Easy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We we will make sure we do that stuff. So. What a nice talk and sharing. Hope yeah. to see you guys soon. Yes, Maybe thank, thank you. In Mexico, we do a crazy trip over there together. Yeah. So That'd be oh, nice. Yeah. I'll see you for sure. I'll I'll really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome stuff. Okay. We'll see you guys. Okay.